Open up, if you would, to the Old Testament book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter number 37. So today, I realize that um, a lot of us are seeking God's direction for our nation. I'm right there with you because I realize I live here too. I live in this land. I love this land. Um, I'm very grateful for the United States. So I just feel like today it would be wise for me to talk about where do we go from here? What do we do from here? What's a good response for us in the light of everything that is going on, everything that has gone on? And as we look forward this week to uh, an inauguration, as we look forward to a new a new change in America, what what is the church's response? And individually, what's our individual response? And so I'll start out by saying a couple of things. Number one thing I want to say is, did you know God knew you were going to be alive in 2021? Do you realize that? So, you know, I, as a young person growing up, I'd read all these stories about Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. And I thought, man, I just wish I was living in those days. I just thought that'd be awesome. Then I realized they didn't have indoor plumbing or air conditioners. And I changed my mind a little bit. I thought, well, I'm glad I'm living in my day. And, you know, sometimes we can idealize the past, idealize another time. But the reality is you're not living in another time. You're living today. You're living right now. Just this past week, I saw a program on the election, uh, 1960 election between Kennedy and and, uh, Nixon. And I was watching, you know, footage of that. And you just realize how much America has changed since that election. And... um, you know, there's a video footage of uh, John F. Kennedy walking up to the White House, and you have a picture of Eisenhower greeting him, welcoming him, all these people, you know, clapping and what have you. I mean, we're living in a different day today by far. But the reality is God knew that we would be living today. And so what we need to realize is if God put me in this generation, God put me here to do something about this time in our nation's history. Just like, you know, Washington was born for such a time as this. Jefferson was born for such a time as this. We could look back on our founding fathers. They were in this nation for such a time as this. That season was when they were needed. Well, we need to realize that we're needed during this season of our nation. And there are a lot of us. There are a lot of people that love this nation, that are born again, that pray for this nation daily, pray for our leaders daily. And... um We are not like other nations in that there are many, many God-fearing people that are praying, that are seeking the Lord, and that are seeking after God. So there is a distinction between us and other nations, and that is the remnant in this nation and the number of people that love God and the people that are committed to God. But nonetheless, we're at a time when we think, Pastor, um, what do we do now? Where do we go from here? What is the appropriate response that we have? I know as a pastor, it's all about timing. You know, you can say the right thing at the right time, and it helps a lot of people. A word that's fitly spoken, you know, is like apples of gold and baskets of silver, Proverbs says. So it's something about the right word at the right time. One time I, when I arrived at a funeral home, I'd been asked to officiate a funeral service. And whenever I arrived at this funeral home, the funeral director met me, which is not uncommon, but he was very nervous. And he said, you know, this family, they just want to have a a funeral service. And they said, we just want it to be a happening. We just want it to be a happening. And and he was nervous that this was not just going to be a happening. It was going to be a train wreck, you know. And so he was coming to me going, what are you going to do? You know, you need to, This is. I'm concerned that this family just wants to have this real casual funeral service, but this lady had lived out a full length of days and the family just said, Hey, just, we just want to get up and talk about our mother, talk about our grandmother and just honor her. And we don't want it to have a lot of stiffness or a lot of, of what people are traditionally see in a funeral that has to have these elements that doesn't work. We just want to honor our mother and grandmother. That's it. And of course, honor the Lord because she was a believer. And I remember how this funeral director was really concerned about how this was going to turn out. And um, 
I said, okay, well, I'll do everything I can to kind of help navigate it through all this. Well, as it turned out, I'll be honest with you, I think it was probably one of the best funeral services because they knew what the needs were of that family. They knew this lady. They just got up and honored her life. And I thought, you know, this was really refreshing. And if it, if it helped people, isn't that the goal? You know, that was my thought. If it's helping people to cope with this and to transition, that's what the goal should be. In some ways, I feel like today's sermon is kind of like that funeral service, you know. This may not have the classical look of a Sunday morning service, but my goal is just to help people. My goal is just to help people to transition through where they're at right now and uh, how do we look for a brighter future? How do we look for our, our hope in the Lord at a time like this? So I told you earlier, Sharon and I had this conversation last night. I said, Sharon, you know, this is really important. I want to have a word from the Lord on today. And at that time, I couldn't say I had this clear definitive word, even though I'd studied this week on a number of things. Um, But as I was getting ready for this service, this passage from Ezekiel 37 came to me. And uh, I want to say to you, I'd like to read it. Now, I understand this passage has historical reference or biblical reference to the nation of Israel, the regathering of the nation of Israel. So I understand that there are scriptures that the primary focus of a text is dealing with one thing, but yet there are overlapping truths. We say the law of double reference, they can be applied in other aspects. And so today what I want us to look at is what is referred to as a valley of dry bones. I'm going to read this to you from the New Living Translation. This particular translation, the header above the 37th chapter says, a valley of dry bones. And I'm going to begin reading here. And the Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. So let's just think about a valley filled with bones. For example, some of the pictures you saw there were from uh, Mount Scott down in Lawton area, and you see the kids, you know, looking down over the area below that, and and basically that's what the Lord allowed Ezekiel to see was he's up high, he looks down into a valley area, and it's just all these dry bones everywhere. Now I don't know about you, but dry bones are not something I enjoy looking at. It's not like looking at the ocean or looking at mountains. I mean, it's it's a picture of devastation. It's a picture of death is what it's a picture of. Okay. Dry bones are a picture of death. And the Bible says he led me around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried up. So these bones had been there for some time and they're dried up. And he's looking there at all these different bones that are completely dried up. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? So he looks at it and says, is this situation hopeless? Is this situation beyond repair? Is this situation, um, it's over with, so to speak. So I think sometimes we're in a situation right now where we question the future of our nation. We question what's the outcome, what's the future going to look like? How are things going to turn out? Now, if you're not in the boat with me on that one, I'm in that boat, okay? And by that, I mean I have concerns about the direction of our nation because I believe we're a nation under God, and I believe that if we annex God or if we kick God out, um, I'm concerned about that. And so it's very important to me that we remain a nation under God. And so then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? And the reply was, O sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. God, what do you think? You're asking me a question that I don't have the answer to, so I'm going to put it back on you. What do you think about this situation? Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to breathe into you and make you live again. Now, prophesy to these bones. Speak a prophetic message to these bones. And what is the prophetic message? The message is opposite 
of what they saw in the natural. Did you know if you have a wayward child, you don't need to sit around talking about how wayward they are and how God-hater they are and they're lost and they're reprobate and they're double reprobate and they're triple reprobate. How many know that's not helping the problem, any? You say, Lord, I just believe you're bringing them home just like the prodigal came home safe and sound. You're bringing them home in the name of Jesus. And so the Lord's saying over this situation, you kind of have two options. Option A is just keep talking about how bad it is. Just talk about how bad the situation is. Or option B is begin to prophesy and begin to speak over that situation and begin to declare the word of the Lord. Now, anybody can curse the darkness. Anybody can sit around and talk about how bad it is right now. Y'all, there's a remnant of people that can say, but God still said in the last days, he's pouring his spirit on all flesh. He said sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Now, I'm not blind to the fact that the same Bible teaches that in the last days, evil men are going to wax worse and worse. They're deceived and they're deceiving other people. So I understand that's in the Bible. And I understand I can't pray away prophecy. I can't change things that God has said, this is the way it's going to be. Jesus himself said, these things must be, but the end is not yet. So Jesus talked about there are things that are determined, but what we can do as a remnant people, we can make sure that on our watch, that God's plan, his kingdom is coming, his will is being done on earth as it is in heaven to his fullest extent that whatever God willed to do, God wants to do in our lifetime, in our generation, that God's able to get done what is near and dear to his heart. Would you agree with me on that? So, you know, here's what happens. Salt can't stop decay, but salt can delay the decay. In other words, you know, if you salt meat, you're not going to, you can't stop it, but you can slow it down. And and so what I want to say, the church is there are certain things that God has said is going to take place in the last days. But what we can do is the body of Christ and say, Lord, but we believe that the will of God is being maximized and that what you want to take place in this nation is being done to the extent. I'm going to use my faith to its maximum. I'm going to use my faith to its maximum to change the outcome of certain things. Okay, so the Lord said to me, now the Lord said to me, let me, let me, let me say it this way. This is what the Lord didn't tell him to do. Speak this prophetic message to the bones. Bones, it's bad. It's real bad and it's going to get worse. (laughs) Can I get an amen on that? He didn't say, look at the bones and keep talking about how bad it is. He said, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm again, I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and will, you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. You say, Pastor, what do you recommend or what do you believe the Bible recommends that I do during this season? Keep speaking the word of the Lord over our nation. How many know that the hymn is not God curse America? The hymn is God bless America. Now you say, well, how's God going to bless the mess of this nation? There's so much sin. There's so many people that are oppositional to God's plan. There's a remnant in the land. There are people that still honor the Lord. God has reserved unto himself a certain group of people that want to honor his name. So what we have to do in the midst of this is not get so drawn up to where if we're not careful, hear this church, because this is important. If it's not careful, you're aiding and abetting the devil's plan more than you're aiding and abetting God's plan. If you're not careful, you're assisting the devil instead of resisting the devil. Does that make sense? In other words, that you have kind of bought into the propaganda. You bought into what the devil's wanted to do, and you're siding in with the devil's plan more than you're siding in with God's plan for this nation. And so what we have to be real careful is that we declare the opposite of what we see at times. 
that we're saying these bones are going to live again. God is breathing into this situation. Now, realize this, it's, it, it is the Lord. It's not by our flesh, it's not by our might, it's not by our power, but it is by the Spirit of the living God. Can I say this to you? Next time you're tempted to curse the nation, why don't you just release God? I prophesy over this nation that in the name of Jesus, there's a third great awakening coming to America. In other words, you know, you can talk about it or you can, you know, you can stay on the dark side or stay on the answer side. I don't know if you've followed Dutch Sheets over the past 70 days, 71 days now, that he has a prayer daily that he releases and he's praying and and he puts a lot of time into this. I mean, it's not just flippantly done, but he puts a lot of time into these 15 minutes or so that he shares. And, and it's just a prayer over the nation. There's so many things that he says that are just like so profound. And it's not a quote prophecy. It's just him saying, this is where I'm at. This is how I feel led to pray for our nation. Then he invites us to join him along. You know, I just feel like that's where we're at as a nation is that we've got to have people that in the midst of all this, that we're still speaking over the dry bones. We're speaking over this situation and we're helping the situation out. Can I get an amen? Amen. So reminder, my premise is this is like that funeral service. It may not look like your classical Sunday morning service, but as long as I help you, that's all we need to do here, all right? Help you deal with grief. Help you deal with the discouragement that is surrounding you right now. So the Lord spoke to him, and the Lord said, you need to prophesy over these situations. Now, y'all, if there is no prophetic word, if there is no message given, there is not going to be a change. And so it's really cause and effect. It's, it's us speaking that. I'm going to tell you a funny little story. So whenever I was a sophomore in high school, at the end of my sophomore year, I ran for the class officer. And we had a class of over 400 kids. And so I run for, for my office, and, and I ran for vice president. So I got up, and I gave this speech. And there was a runoff in every other class, but that vice presidency, they, you know, they, I, after I spoke, it, it went, it went surprisingly well. Okay. And so my dad was up at the school doing something and, and one of the uh, speech teachers said, yeah, I, I heard Tom speak and man, that was, that, it really went over well. Of course, I did tell people, if you vote for me, I'm going to see what I can do to get you more food on your lunch plate, you know? <laughs> So anyway, I, I had this speech, you know, it had some humor mixed in. But anyway, I, I, I had this speech. And um, anyway, so I, I had this speech, and, and my mom, her, and, and when he, the, the, the speech teacher said, you know, Tom, really, that went well. I mean, he had a good speaking ability that day, he said that. Well, my mom got word of that through my dad, and she came up to me, and she said to me, now remember, at that time, I'm 15 years old, she says, she said, Tom, one day God's going to use that for his glory. Amen. Now, she said that to me. I was 15. I remember turning around going, it ain't going to happen. I mean, in other words, she was saying, one day you'll be a minister. One day you'll use that to teach God's word, minister God's word. And I remember, I remember turning around going, well, no, no. I, I mean, thank you, but it's not going to happen. And I just kind of walked off. I couldn't see that in my future. And, you know, it was two years later when I felt the Lord speak to me, and, and part of what I felt like he wanted me to do was preach the gospel. Now, now here's what I want to emphasize to you. Somebody prophesied over you. They saw something in you before you saw it in yourself. Somebody believed in you before you believed in yourself. Somebody believed to see change in you whenever you couldn't see it in yourself. So I just want to say what we have to do is say, Lord, we believe that you're still working. We're not going to zero in on what the devil is doing. Let's zero in on what God's doing. And let's stand and believe what the Lord is doing in this nation. Now, most of everybody here that's been a part of our church knows that once a year we host a conference over in the Czech Republic. We work with missionaries that live there for 15 years, and they have all these network of relationships. And the church basically helps fund this conference. I mean, I'd say 80% of it's the church. And we go and do this conference. 
Now, they're living under a very, it's a socialistic government. It's a heavy-handed government. There's very few buildings that are churches like Good News Church that are what we call 24-7 buildings. A lot of them are rented. There are a few that they have 24-7. A lot of them are uh, just rented the morning of, and then they have service. It's just expensive to do that. But um, here's what I'll tell you you see in that country. You see Christians that are more committed to God than many, 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 many Christians in America. You see Christians that are committed to evangelism. You see Christians that are very devout and very committed to the Lord. You see the way it works sometimes, y'all. As long as we got it made in the shade, people just kind of go in cruise control and there's no passion. Muscles grow when there is resistance training. Christians grow when there is resistance. Now, do you think there's going to be more resistance for the church in the months ahead? I do. Are you going to think there's going to be more pushback in the months ahead than what we've known in the past? Yeah, I do. You say, well, is that going to affect us in Oklahoma? On some level, it's a spirit of Antichrist that's affecting the whole nation. And so what we've got to realize is, yeah, we're going to, but in the midst of all that, you know what we can do? The Bible says about the, uh, the Pharaoh, about the Egyptians, it says the more that he oppressed them, the more they grew and the more they flourished. The more there was opposition, heavy-handed government pushing down on them, the more they grew and they flourished. And what we've got to realize as as the body of Christ, we're called to push forward, we're called to grow, and to do what God has called us to do. So I think when we read this passage, we think, well, Pastor, this was written many years ago. This is a passage that actually applies to the nation of Israel first and foremost. But my point is this, it also, there's biblical principles that apply, and that is somebody had to speak the answer, somebody had to speak life, somebody had to intercede and declare the word of the Lord. That's what I believe God's calling us to do. Now, notice this. Um, It goes on to say, and I'm going to read verse 6 again, and I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put my breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Verse number 7. So I spoke this message just as the Lord told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. Now, I realize that there's a seed time and harvest. Whenever we speak the word of God, there's a time that we have spoken the word, and then there's a a period of time before we see the fruition of what we have spoken. But here's what I do want to promise you. The minute you get in faith, the minute you begin to declare the word of the Lord, spiritual forces are released. Angels are released. When the angels came to help Daniel, and and the angels in Daniel chapter 12, they said, we have come because of your words. We came, we were released because of words that you spoke. You see, I believe without a doubt in Acts chapter 12, whenever they had killed James with the sword and they were going to kill Peter, the Bible says the church made prayer without ceasing on the behalf of Peter. And the Bible says that God sent an angel to the prison where Peter was at and got him out of that situation. You know what I believe? That that intercessory prayer that went on for Peter the answer came in the way of an angel being released to him. And as the church intercedes, things happen in the spirit realm. Things happen. And and so the moment he began to speak and do what the Lord told him to do, as he spoke this message, suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came back together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watch, muscle and flesh covered over the bones. Then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. So this is the nation of Israel is regathered, but they're not born again by and large. Many are, but many more are not. And so there's a regathering, what we have seen has taken place, but they haven't had the new life, the, the new birth. So what we can say is, is that God regathered them. God began to put things together. Now, we can look at the nation 
If we can say, well, we have political problems, we have a political divide, we have uh, you know, economic divide, we have racial divide. But I'm going to tell you, all of that's fake. There's one primary problem. It's a spiritual problem. And you say, well, no, Pastor, it's not fake. That's a real problem. What I meant is this. Let me clarify that. If we try to tackle these things, you know, if you try to tackle race issues without Jesus saying, love your brother as you love yourself, it's just never going to happen. If you try to tackle certain things, we're going to fix the nation economically, but we're, we're not going to tackle the spiritual heart of people, it's not going to happen. How do we pray for our nation? How do we stand against certain things? The answer to our nation is very simple. We need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We need God to move. We need a revival. And let me tell you, the revival doesn't have to run through the White House. It doesn't have to be stamped by the White House before it's valid. God can do a tremendous work, and he runs through our house. He runs through our lives, and he does a work. So we can't feel like that, well, that we would have revival, but the White House won't approve it. Give me an amen. Well, we would have revival, but, you know, the Senate, they, they voted against that. Y'all, did you know God's not looking for a show of hands before he moves? Amen. He's not looking for certain people to get on board. Now, if I can just get so many votes, then we'll go ahead and proceed ahead. God is doing a work in this land, and we got to pray for a spiritual outpouring, a spiritual breakthrough. Now, I know what people say. This is what people say. Pastor, we're living in the time of the outpouring. So for you to say we need to have outpouring, we're living in the time of the outpouring. And you know what I tell people? You're exactly right. It started at Pentecost. But if you'll know, if you've ever been in a downpour, you'll know there are seasons where the rain intensifies. In other words, you know, you may say, you look outside and it's raining, and then you say, oh, my Lord, it's really coming down now. I mean, it's been raining the whole afternoon, but I tell you, it just whooped up and it's, it's coming down with greater intensity. And that's what happens in U.S. history or any country's history in that there are seasons where the outpouring becomes more intense. There are seasons when what God is doing is intensified. It wasn't enough for them to be regathered. God's ultimate plan is, I'm going to breathe my breath into them. It's not enough for us to just try to put things together in the natural. We need ultimately God's breath breathed into our nation, and it's going to come through the church. If you want to know what is the condition of our nation, put a thermometer in the church's mouth. If the church is indifferent, the nation's in trouble. And so what I'm just wanting to reiterate to you today is, is you say, Pastor, do you have a word of the Lord based upon everything that's been going on? All I can tell you is what I felt like the Lord put in my heart for today's message, and that is it's a time to prophesy over dry bones and not just talk about how bad the dry bones are. It's not just a time to sit around and whine and all that, you know, and it's not going to change anything. How many know pouting Christians don't change anything? And there's powders, you know. There's some people, they're still pouting. That they, I've teased. They're still pouting that they canceled the Brady Bunch. I mean, no, they, you know, they're just pouting about this, pouting about that, pouting, pouting. They got hurt. When, when did that happen? It happened six months ago. And they're still pouting about it. Y'all, that's crazy. You got to get over stuff and move on with your life. So what I want to say to you is, is that we've got to realize God is saying, I want to, you to prophesy. I want you to begin to speak over this situation. I want you to begin to bless. I want you to begin to declare the word of the Lord. And so when this happened, it was gathered together where there was no breath. And then they speak a prophetic message. Verse 9, I'm reading it again. To the wind, son of man, speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come, O breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these dead bodies so that they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and the breath came into their bodies, and they came to life, and they stood up on their feet, a great army. I'm going to give you another part to this message. On some level, we're a great army, the body of Christ. 
and we got to stand up on our feet and we got to get up and we got to, you know, wake up and say, Lord, help me to, to do what I'm supposed to do during this season of my life. Now, I know some of the older people in the congregation, well, I'm, I'm ready to check out. Some of you are younger people here. I'm ready to check out right beside you. You know, I'm ready to go. <laughs> hey, maybe for such a time as this, maybe we need you here yes. right now more than you need to check out. Amen. Maybe we need you to be active. You know, in the nation of Israel, it's compulsory. Everybody serves in the military. We need you. You, know, you may have some medical disability or mental disability and you can't serve. But, you know, by and large, it's a foregone conclusion. If you're a citizen here, you're going to serve here. Well, I'm going to tell you, our nation, the body of Christ is the same way. Everybody is called into the army of God. Amen. Everybody is called to, to do their part. Now, let me say this. The army of God is not flesh and bone. We're not fighting people. We're not, you know, out killing people. It's the demonic spirits that work behind the scenes. You know, people get in trouble that way. They get, they get so riled up and they go after the natural. But y'all, the, the natural, these are just puppets on a string. These are just people being used and they don't even realize it. I know Hitler was a problem, but do you know there was a spirit that worked behind the scenes on Adolf Hitler? You realize that? Mussolini, you just go down the line of any dictator. There was, there was a spirit working behind the scenes. There was a spirit working in, behind the scenes in that situation. So the Bible says in verse 10, so I spoke the message as he commanded me and to breathe again into their bodies. And they came back to life and they stood up on their feet, a great army. It's time for all of us to make sure we're standing up in this day and we're doing our part. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel, okay? They are saying, we have become old, dry bones, all hope is gone, our nation is finished. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I didn't know that was in there until just now. <laughs> Isn't that funny? As I'm getting ready this morning, God kept talking to me about dry bones, dry bones, the passage about dry bones. And I'm thinking, okay, I need to, and the, you know what I did when I got here? I need to find that chapter in the Bible. I'm just being honest with you, okay? I mean, I'm just telling you, that's what the Lord said. Read about the dry bones. And then I found it. And then I didn't know verse 11 was in there, but I know there's a lot of people, all hope is gone, our nation is finished. Isn't that powerful? I just say, what, what, what's the solution? The antidote to that is this. We're prophesying. We're speaking it. We're declaring it in the name of Jesus. Amen. In some ways, I feel kind of fortunate because I feel Sharon and I, having gone on these seven different trips over in the Czech Republic, and we see all these guys, and they deal with so much opposition and you know the post-communist country and how they deal with it. But, man, they are intense about praying for their leaders and praying for their nation. And they'll tell you to this day, you know, one thing our nation, despite it all, Brent Olson brought this to my attention. He said, I believe it was Brent, said, you know, the Czech people stood with Israel through the, through the 1948, through 67, through the different battles they endeavored. And, and, you know, they've always stood, aligned themselves. You know, we're praying that our, our country will is going to keep aligning itself with the nation of Israel. But we, we see in this situation that that, you know, God has a remnant of people. And I'm blessed by seeing these remnant of people pray for their nation, pray intently for the leadership, and we got to continue to do the same. And then I'm going to read down here. He said, our nation is finished. Therefore prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My, oh, my people, I will open your graves of exiles and cause you to rise again. So instead of us talking about our nation's finish, why don't we talk about God raise up leaders, raise up laborers, raise up preachers, raise up apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers, raise up people in this nation. 
God, you're still going to finish what you've started in this great land. And, and they prayed that. And they said, then, then I will bring you back to the land of Israel when this happens. All oh, my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. So, is is America finished or is America, you know, going through? We'd have to speak the opposite of that. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'll be honest with you. If you keep going the way of sin, the Bible says sin, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So, I believe you keep going the path of sin. Yeah, there's going to be consequences of that. But here's what I do believe. We're a remnant people, and God is calling us to prophesy and to speak over this nation and declare, Lord, you're going to do a work in this last day in the name of Jesus. And you say, Pastor, well, how do you know this is a good little fitting word? Because I, I'll be honest with you, I think the thought in a lot of Christians' minds this week has been that one-liner, the nation is finished. <laughs> But in the midst of that gloom and that heaviness on your heart, why don't we all just begin to declare it over our nation? Lord, do a mighty work in the name of Jesus. Here's the deal, y'all. Let's not try to fix it politically. Let's try to fix it spiritually. Does that make sense? He said, oh, no, no, no. We got to fix it all politically. Good luck with that. Why don't we go, God called us, fix it spiritually. Lord, we believe you're raising up laborers, you're raising up people. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. If you want to go to a convenience store and witness to somebody about the Lord today, you know they're not going to arrest you. How many believe that? Did you know if you want to bake a pie for your neighbor and and, and bring it to your neighbor and, and give them a track and tell them God loves you and I care about you, did you know they're not going to throw you in jail for doing that? Did you know if you want to go visit a nursing home, I can't use that one right now, can I? Because you can't visit a nursing home. But there's so many things that we get to thinking, what about this or what about that or I can't do this? There's a lot you can do. And so don't live in the what ifs, but live in the now and, and know that this is what the Lord's saying. So you say, Pastor, do you have a word for me during this season? Yeah, that's it. In a time when you look out and see death and you see dry bones and you see destruction, don't just talk about what you see. Talk about what you desire to see and begin to declare, Lord, you're working in this nation. And I really think we've got to build that into the culture of our church to where we're really saying, but Lord, but God, but God's working, but God's doing this, but God is moving supernaturally in our nation. And church, I promise you this. There are there is a huge remnant of God fearing people in this nation. There is a huge remnant of God fearing people in this nation. And so you've got to realize we're not alone and, and we're really not like even other countries that were taken over with certain things because there are people that are pushing and through prayer and intercessory prayer. And you say, Pastor, when do you think it's going to get bad? Now I think it's going to get bad now. I tell you, y'all. During the tribulation period is when everything really goes bad. Right. And I believe that there is a, a restraining force. Obviously, I've said that a number of times. There is a force in the earth. There's salt and light. There's something pushing back the worst of that. So we believe that God's keeping the door open so people can come in and be saved. Amen. So I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray right now in Jesus' name for everyone here. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, at times when we're tempted to think, well, we're done, we're finished. But Lord, in the midst of that environment, that God will declare and prophesy over the nation and will speak the answer over this nation. And that God, in the time of latter rain, the Bible says, ask for the time of rain during the season of the latter rain. So, Lord, we're asking, Father, right now, we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's just bless the Lord right now. Come on. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you. Come on, let's just lift up our praise to God today. 
you know, whether this is your church home or not, you're in the family of God. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's just thank God for the blood of Jesus. Let's thank God for the name of Jesus. Thank God for what you're doing, Lord. Lift up your praise to God. Father, we bless you today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Bless your holy name. Come on, church, let's just bless him. Come on, lift up your praise right now. Father, we glorify your name. Praise you, Lord Jesus, Father. Help us to walk in the light of what you're saying. Help us to have understanding. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Glorify your holy name. Father, we just take authority over every demonic power, every evil power that's trying to destroy this nation from within. Every demonic power that's trying to uh, uh, take it, you know, to cause this country to implode. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, and and we do exactly what your word says. We prophesy over this nation that this nation will live, Lord, that you will fulfill your purpose in this nation, Lord, that, God, you will gather this nation, and it will fulfill its destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, and that there will be a move of the Spirit in this nation in the name of Jesus. Father, there will be a great awakening. There will be a move of the Spirit in this nation, Lord. Father, we just bless you today. Come on, let's just thank. Would you begin to declare that over this nation? Lord, thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this nation. Thank you, Lord. We're not trying to fix spiritual problems in a natural way, but we're, we're spe- finishing them in a spiritual way, Lord. Father, we bless you today, Lord, in the holy name of Jesus. Come on, everyone stand to your feet today, and let's just continue to pray right now. Father, we lift up our nation in the name of Jesus. We pray the will of God be done. The will of God be done. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. In the name of Jesus, Father, we praise you for such a time as this, Lord, that we were born for such a time as this. And Lord, people say, well, there's not a war going on right now. We're in peacetime in America. We're not in peacetime. There is a spiritual battle going on right now. And Lord, you're calling all of us to serve. You're calling all of us to pray.